Hello students, today I will be taking, continuing the morphology of cockroach. So last time I have taught about the head and the thoracic region. Today I will be explaining about abdomen of cockroach. So in abdomen, first I will explain about abdominal segments, then the second I will explain about various appendages present in the abdomen. So first is in uh, abdomen, I will be explaining about segments of abdomen. Abdominal segments. So First, female cockroach. In female cockroach, uh, what happens to the abdominal segments? So, And second, I will be explaining about what about the segments in male cockroach. Male cockroach. So I was supposed to explain abdomen of cockroach. In abdomen of cockroach, the first point I'll be taking about uh, giving information about the segments of the abdomen of cockroach. In that first point will be female and second will be the segments in the male cockroach. In female cockroach, So, in the female cockroach or male cockroach, in the abdomen, there are total of 10 segments present. Okay. So, there are total of 10 segments present, both in male and female. And those are, those are the abdominal uh, segments present. In the female, also 10 segments. In the male, also 10 segments. Now, what will be the difference between the abdominal segments in the male and female? Certain differences you will come to know once I explain it. So, in the female, there is seventh segment. 
seventh segment. This seventh segment is boat shaped. This seventh segment is boat shaped. Seventh segment is going to combine. Now, what happens is seventh segment will cover the eighth and ninth segment. For example, if this is seventh, eighth, and ninth segment from the side, and this sternum is going to cover the eighth and ninth. So, as a result, what happens is the eighth and ninth are not segments are not visible from the ventral side of cockroach. So, this covers 8th and ninth segment this is going to cover 8th and ninth segment so this is boat shaped okay now when they combine when it covers as a result 8th and ninth segment becomes invisible becomes invisible. That too, we are talking about the female. Now, all together of this one, all together will create, when a seventh covers eighth and ninth, it will create a chamber. And that is called as Genital pouch. It is also called genital chamber. The genital chamber in the anterior side, there are some openings present and they are. So, here you should know that each segment will be consisting of tergum at the dorsal side and sternum at the ventral side. So, seventh segment means what? Here I mean the sternum. The seventh sternum. So, seventh sternum covers the eighth and ninth segment and seventh sternum is uh, uh, Sternite also you can tell. Seven sternite covers the eighth and ninth one. As a result, eighth and ninth sternum are not visible, whereas the seventh is visible. So only the seventh is visible in the female, the sternite. Okay. It forms a genital pouch. In front of the genital pouch, there are some important openings. So that is called anterior genital pouch. And another one is posterior genital pouch. Anterior genital pouch has an opening called genital pore. One more spermatical spermatical spores pores as well as collateral gland opening. collateral gland opening and this will be present at the anterior genital pouch and the genital pouch cannot be formed unless the seventh sternite is going to cover or the sternum is going to cover the eighth and ninth. So, posteriorly it is having uh, ovipositor or it is also called uthecal chamber where utheca is deposited by with the help of ovipositor. Okay, so this was uh, about the segments in the female. 
So we are not talking about the dorsal uh, exoskeleton plates. We are talking about the plates that are present on the ventral side and they are called sternum. Whereas the above one, they are called as tergum. Okay. So this is about the female segments. And next will be about in the male segments. What happens to the abdominal uh, segments in the male? So, seventh sternum will only cover eighth. So, therefore, ninth is visible. But whereas in female, the ninth was not visible. Okay. Then how about the genital chamber in male? Genital chamber in the male is formed by 8th and ninth tergum. You have to note here it is tergum and not the sternum. The 8th and ninth tergum and below ninth sternum together forms the... Um, Excuse me. The ninth and tenth tergum, where has the ninth sternum only? They together forms the genital chamber in male. They form the genital chamber in the male. So genital chamber in the male is not big enough. It is present at the tip, at the posterior tip of the abdomen and it is not large enough. Okay. And what all structures will be present here is the dorsal side of the genital chamber. Dorsal side of genital chamber is present the anus, whereas ventral side of genital chamber will be present the genital aperture of the male. Aperture or uh, opening here, reproductive system opening. As well as openings of glands like conglobate gland or phallic gland. So opens here. Okay. Conglobate gland opens in the ventral side of the genital chamber whereas anus is present. So, it means that genital pore as well as conglobate gland are ventral to the anus or you can tell uh, the uh, male uh, dorsal side and the male ventral uh, side of the genital chamber. So, this was about uh, the genital chambers formed by the segments and also which segments can appear in male and which segment will appear in the Female, I have also explained. Now, lastly, how many tergum is there? So, total segments present both in male and female. Already told it is 10. So, tergum is above the segment and sternum is below the segment. So, how many will be there? So, in both there is 10 tergum till 10 tergum. But 10th sternum is absent. It means sternum only will be up to the ninth segment, abdominal segments. So, these tergum and sternum, as I already explained, they are sclerites. They are nothing but sclerites. Then, Next portion here, 
will be the appendages present in the abdomen abdominal appendages abdominal appendages abdominal appendages so appendages are structures attached to the coming out arising from main part of the body so which all structures arise from the main part of the body uh, from the head the main the appendage that is attached is the antenna and the appendage in the thoracic regions will be the wings and the legs and what are those appendages present in the abdomen so the appendages present in the abdomen will be anal circuit okay so anal circuit is a jointed appendage um, so anal circuit is present both in male and female that should be the first point here present both in male and female They present both in male and female. And one more structure appendage is there and that is called anal style. That is present only in the male. So when it is present only in the male, what idea it gives? It helps to differentiate between male and female. It is a morphological feature. It is an external features by which what can be differentiated, which is a male cockroach and which is a female cockroach. So, it becomes a sexual dimorphic character. So, therefore, anal style becomes sexual dimorphic characters. It becomes a sexual dimorphic character and helps to differentiate the male cockroach from female cockroach by visualizing externally itself. So, this is the anal circuit. Now, where what is the anal circuit? Anal circuit is a jointed structures. It may have, uh, that means many segments can combine and then form an anal circuit. Understand? So, uh, like it can be, it is, it is a not one or two or few. So, many of them will join and form the anal circuit. Now, this anal circuit typically arises from the 10th segment of the body. 10th segment of the body and it is present both male and female. So, role of anal circuit, it will help to receive the sound vibrations. So, also it can have other sensory functions, primarily it can help to receive the sound vibrations. Okay. So, that means if there is any vibration, the cockroach can detect it through the anal circuit. Then anal style this is a structure which is unjointed typically because most of the appendages in the cockroach are jointed but the anal style is unjointed and this arises from ninth segment. This arises from ninth segment. Now, the question is, if it is a 10th segment, where does it actually lies? It is a targum, whereas this one, it is towards the sternum. So, on top and this would be on the bottom. This is much larger, but this one is more smaller in size, smaller and thin also in size. And its function uh, might, um, distinct function is not uh, known, but it probably helps in copulation and it is having, it is sensory in structures. So, that will be its function here. So, uh, this was about the appendages present in the abdomen that is anal circuit and anal style. Okay, anal style.
ओके सो हियर यू कैन सी So here, this is the abdominal uh, segments. These are the last abdominal uh, segments. As you can see, the these first two figure indicates the male cockroach because it additionally has this anal style. Okay. So as you can see, this has this is the anal style. Okay. Whereas this one, this bigger one, this is the anal circle, and therefore this indicates these two is the diagram for the male cockroach, where it has only anal circle is there. There is an absence of anal style. So these two last abdominal segments, this will be meant for uh, for for the identification, uh, for identifying it. It is a female. So this is the male cockroach, and this is going to be the female cockroach. and what is this w shape it is a notched tergum it's notched tergum okay so next is digestive system of cockroach next will be digestive system of cockroach so here so i, sh I shall explain this with a figure again so digestive system of cockroach i will be going to explain along with the diagram here so this one what you can see here is so what you can see here is the digestive system of cockroach so it runs right from here and ends ultimately so first part of digestive system should be a mouth and the last of course will be a aperture called the anus so this this one is the digestive system what you can see is just near this esophagus and this crop you are seeing a salivary glands which will secrete saliva and that saliva is stored here in the receptacle 
and the ducts ultimately open at the base of hyperpharynx or the tongue which I have told yesterday. So this was uh, about the digestive system in broad. So digestive system ultimately is to procure to take the food in and how is the nutrition you all know first of all it is omnivorous digestive um, system is going to be omnivorous. Cockroach is an omnivore. It can feed both on animal matter, plant matter and many other objects like paper. It can be cardboard, it can be soap, it can be. So it can adjust with variety of food material. So it almost eats everything. So it is an omnivore. Now, apart from this, if I say what is the nutrition of it? it its nutrients are there. But what is the nutrition is typically holozoic. The nutrition of the cockroach is typically holozoic means it has to ingest the solid food matter. After ingesting, it has to uh, masticate them, grind them and then enzymatically digest them. When ingestion of food, solid food particle will occur and then that subjected to digestion means that kind of a nutrition is called holozoic nutrition. So this is omnivore. And the nutrition is holozoic. Now, broad divisions of cockroach digestive system. So, cockroach digestive system can be divided into foregut, midgut, foregut mid gut and hind gut so fore gut mid gut and hind gut so here fore gut will be till the gizzard so what you can see till here till the gizzard from the beginning of the digestive system till the gizzard, that is called as foregut. Whereas the mid one here, mesenteron, it is called stomo, uh, uh, stomodium, proctodium, mesenteron. Okay, here this one is midgut, also called as midgut. Then after the midgut, the remaining part here, that is the colon, cecum, colon, rectum. This part is called the hindgut. This part will be called as the hindgut. So I will be explaining the various components of this foregut, midgut and hindgut. Now, foregut, the parts of the foregut, the so foregut begins with mouth and then pharynx then esophagus then the gizzard So yesterday I told that mouth parts all together will create a cavity called preoral cavity. At the base of that cavity only, mouth is supposed to be 
located. So mouth is an opening, the first part of the digestive system in majority of these animals. But this will be lying at the base of pre-oral cavity. Now pharynx, pharynx also falls more or less in the head region itself. That means it spans through the head region. So pharynx is short tubitus. Pharynx is a short tube that continues with the mouth. So pharynx comes here. That's one from the mouth. So pharynx will continue in the head region it comes and it will continue as esophagus. That pharynx will continue as esophagus. Esophagus is thin walled narrow tube. So it is thin walled. thin walled tube okay and somewhat narrow here the esophagus leads to a structure now what happens from here the esophagus will start becoming wider and wider this dilated structure it is called as a crop so this dilation means becoming wider and that is called as the crop. So it becomes pear shaped. You can see pear is a fruit. So pear shaped it becomes. And this pear shaped part of the foregut in the just system of cockroach, it is called as crop. So now crop is pear shaped. It is an extension from esophagus. And it is also thin walled. Now what happens is it stores food here. It stores food. So it is the part of the digestive system that helps in storing of food. It, however, it will not be involved in grinding or it is not involved in uh, say digestion and all it's a part of digestive system where whatever the food is procured by the cockroach it is stored in the crop so it helps in storage of food in case more and more food goes in the crop it also can extend to uh, extensibility is there to certain extent okay so crop is pear shaped and it is sac like Pear shaped sac, you can tell. The best way to explain here is pear shaped sac. Okay. So, what was that? Mouth, pharynx, esophagus, crop. And then comes the gizzard. Crop leads to gizzard and you all should know among the uh, among all the structures present in the digestive system the largest part in the digestive system of cockroach will be the crop so gizzard is a muscular chamber it is so gizzard is highly muscular part of the forecut a muscular chamber understand now what happens is a cross section of a gizzard the outer part of the gizzard is having the circular muscles followed by the longitudinal muscles but the band of the longitudinal muscles is less and towards the inner side there are six chitinous teeth present so this is one this is two three four five and six so six chitinous teeth will be present now as this circular muscle starts functioning the teeth are able to grind the food so purpose is gizzard helps in 
gizzard helps in grinding of food so it means that uh, it is the one that is going to masticate masticate the food helps in grinding or a mastication of food it means that the larger food particles are made more smaller and soft but the individual food molecules are not digested here only it is a mechanical digestion occurs in the gizzard gizzard is also called proventriculus and that is the structure why proventriculus comes just before the uh, ventricles that is usually comparable to stomach so this is gizzard highly muscular especially the predominant muscles in the gizzard are the circular muscles which are present on outer side so helps in grinding and masticating this gizzard is somewhat not dilated portion it is somewhat smaller more compact it is more compact or small in size but highly muscular but highly muscular understand now here what happens is this is the last part of foregut that means foregut is going to end with gizzard foregut is going to end with gizzard the next comes midgut midgut mesenteron so midgut is the portion after the foregut foregut ends here then comes the midgut so midgut is also called mesenteron and it is a relatively narrow tube so if you consider the hindgut midgut is diameter is supposed to be narrow but the diameter is uniform that means there is no variation in the diameter as it can be seen in the hindgut so there is a uniform diameter so midgut is of uniform diameter is of uniform diameter and also what can be absorbed is coiling can be absorbed so what you can see there is a coiling in a uh, slight coiling in a mesenteron that is a midgut as well as in the hindgut so since coiling exist here we mean that the entire digestive system of cockroach is not straight understand it is not straight but instead it is coiled so coil type of digestive system is present in cockroach so coiling exists here now what is what you have seen in the foregut is mainly the function that occurs in the foregut is a uh, little bit digestion occurs uh, due to the salivary uh, enzymes Uh, salivary glands enzymes but otherwise in the gizzard what happens is mechanical digestion occurs but major portion of digestion and absorption occurs here in the midgut so the function here is digestion and absorption occurring in the anterior and posterior part of the midgut respectively so this is about the midgut so midgut also has a membrane called peritropic membrane on the inner side which is protective in function and it is it is also uh, has some uh, degree of permeability so it is not totally impermeable it is permeable to digestive enzymes and all so therefore whatever the food which is grinded in the gizzard after it goes into the midgut it get digested by digestive enzymes and then what occurs is absorption occurs after the digestion is complete understand so now here some what is uh, there is here some here some uh, enzymes are released by these finger like structures called hepatic ficae that means 
At the junction of gizzard and the midgut, there are finger-like projections called as hepatic CK. Understand? So, uh, now what is the function of hepatic CK? Cecum, a singular hepatic CK. Now, hepatic CK are six to eight in number. Number of hepatic CK are six to eight, or you can tell a maximum of four pairs will be present. As you can see, there are also extensions here, but they are much larger than these ex extensions called malphagian tubules. So they are finger-like extensions. They are blind tubes. Because they end here. Because they are going to end here, they are called as blind tubes. Now, what is the main function of hepatic CK is? It will secrete digestive enzymes. So, has an important role in digestion. So, it is going to secrete digestive enzymes. So, that is the function of hepatic CK. Now, next will be hind gut. So, mid gut is over. Next is going to be hind gut. So hind gut has further divided uh, is further divided into three parts. One is colon and rectum. Okay. So ileum is comparatively to colon, comparative to rectum is more narrow. It is more narrow as well as short. Now, between the junction, between the junction, between the ileum here, this is the ileum, colon, and this is going to be the rectum. So, between the ileum and the midgut, there are again fine thread-like extensions, thread-like structures. They are called as Malphagian tubules. I'll explain about this when in the next uh, further uh, when I explain about the excretory system of cockroach. So therefore, ileum, colon, and rectum. This is going to be short, narrow, and it should be short. Okay. So as it then comes the colon, which is more broader than ileum, and of course, what is there is Coiling is there here. Okay, what is there? Coiling is there. So, what exists is coiling exists. Coiling will exist. So, but it is more broader. Colon is more broader. Now, what is the function? And of course, coiled. Same thing here, coiled. So what you should know here, what is the function? The ileum. So food gets stored here, grinded here, digested here. But now here what happens is it will pass the remaining undigested food is passed here in the hind gut. So first it passes to ileum and that undigested food passes to the colon. And finally, it will get stored in rectum. So rectum is very wide but not as large as the crop. Crop is supposed to be largest in the digestive system of approach. So, rectum is going to be wide and has ridges called, longitudinal ridges called rectal papillae. Rectal papillae. 
the so here this one is the rectum the it's also broader in case of the hind gut so inside it it has six longitudinal ridges now what happens what is the function of rectum is this is where absorption of water occurs now rectum opens outside through aperture side through an aperture and this aperture itself is the last part of the digestive system and that is supposed to be anus understand so anus is the aperture that opens in the last segment abdominal segment so this was about the digestive system of cockroach it is a holozoic nutrition food get physically digested to certain extent even enzymatically because of the salivary enzymes and most of the digestion absorption occurs in the mid gut and the undigested food is passed through the hind gut to outside of the body then one more uh, system is left that is called as excretory system so excretory system in cockroach not here the excretory system of cockroach consists of malpighian tubules so that forms what excretory system of cockroach so excretory system as i already mentioned here it is nothing but a malpighian tubules are excretory system malpighian tubules acts as a excretory system of cockroach now where it is located you can see here there are fine thread like structures here between a mid gut and hind gut or specifically between ileum and mid gut so that will be the nothing but the malpighian tubules present between mid gut and hind gut present between mid gut and hind gut there are somewhere around a max of 100 to 150 malpighian tubules 100 to a max of 100 range is there 100 to 150 so a max of 150 malpighian tubules can be present in a cockroach these tubules are very fine and thread like and they are yellow in color they are yellow in color so uh, this was about the excretory structure of cockroach
Now, if I say this will be the mid gut and this is going to be the hind gut. So, at the junction will be, so here rather I will draw single tube. So, here will be mid gut and here will be the hind gut. That's right. So, this tube will be actually referring to the Malfusion tubule. So, surrounding this particular tubule, there is a cavity called hemocele. And in this cavity, a colorless blood of cockroach will be present and that is called the hemolymph. So, this will be the hemolymph. So, what happens this surrounding these 150 malfusion tubules will be a cavity in which the colorless blood of a cockroach is present and that is named as hemolymph. Now, surrounding the, so it means that these 150 microtubules will be floating in the hemolymph. Okay. So, uh, they float themselves into this liquid called uh, colorless blood that is the hemolymph. So, this is just one malfusion tubule, likewise 150 malfusion tubules will be there at the junction of mid gut and hind gut and the progress of the food, movement of the food will be in this direction. So, malfusion tubules, what accumulates here is Now, what is accumulated here is the nitrogenous waste get accumulated here in the hemolymph. Apart from nitrogenous waste in, uh, in different derivative forms, then those nitrogenous waste and salts, excess of salts, all those will be absorbed by this malfusion tubule. As you can see here, it is a blind tube. Okay. There is going to be a blind tube. So, these nitrogenous waste will be absorbed in the malfusion tubules. And can it reabsorb? Yes, reabsorption is possible. Suppose excess of salt goes inside the malfusion tubules and body requires those excess of salt and reabsorption can occur. Some of them, some of the salts can get reabsorbed. But what happens is those nitrogenous waste that has been absorbed, here it is converted into uric acid. Okay. Uric acid, semi-solid form. So, therefore, we say that cockroach is uricotelic because it is going to form what? Uric acid from the other nitrogenous waste. So, nitrogenous waste will be absorbed by malfusion tubules and here ciliated cells will be there. Okay, glandular cells will be there. Also, ciliated cells will be there. Those ciliated cells, the beating action of the cilia will propel this uric acid into the gut. So, what you are saying is there is no separate opening for the excretory system. Whatever the excretory waste is produced, that is whatever the uric acid is produced, it is going to be released here in the, I mean, pool, I mean, joined here or released here, it, the uric acid comes here in the hind gut. The first is ileum, colon and the rectum. Understand? So, therefore, we say that cockroach is uricotelic. 
So as you can see, if there is excess of salts, it will be absorbed by malfusion tubules. But if the requirement is there, it can be reabsorbed. So reabsorption, absorption occurs. So therefore, it is not only an excretory organ, uh, it not only helps in eliminating of excretory organ, wherever salt balance there is also help in osmo regulation. So therefore, function of malfusion tubule will be elimination of excretory waste okay at the same time it is also osmoregulatory what we call water balance along with even salt balance ionic balance is this all together it is responsible for osmoregulation and therefore wherever there is osmoregulation there is a body fluid maintenance regulation of body fluid what we call here uh, the one that is surrounding this malfusion uh, tubule so this was about excretory system of cockroach so malfusion tubule becomes becomes primary excretory organ Pri primary excretory organ See, apart from this, there are three of the um, st structures and cells that help in excretion. They are called as accessory excretory structures. accessory excretory structures it means that malfusion tubule is not the only one where the uric acid is stored and released in the digestive system but instead even other uh, additional structures are present and cells are present that will also help in removing the uric acid produced So what is that? What are those is fat body, nephrocytes, and the third one uh, will be the uricose glands. uricose glands now fat body see here uh, the there is some uh, space between the body wall and the visceral organs and uh, that space uh, will be present certain cells that stores the fat those cells can also store and form uric acid so they are called the accessory excretory structures called the fat body beneath the body wall in the space between the body wall and the internal organs okay so this is analogous to liver because it also stores the fat the cells present here also stores the fat the next cell is nephrocytes that can store the uric acid that can uh, form the uric acid and release and this is going to be present in the pericardial uh, cavity near the heart these cells are uh, located and they also help in eliminating the excretory phase that is uric acid only the next is uricose glands these are present uh, they are not present in all species of cockroach but they are uh, present in the uh, long tubules of the uh, they are long tubules 
present in the uh, mushroom glands with which also helps in uh, eliminating the uric acid. So there are other ways also by which uric acid is formed. Once uric acid is formed, so other than malfusion tubules, the uric acid that is stored here in the uricose glands will be released outside the reproductive system during copulation. Whereas the one that is deposited under the body wall uh, can be removed uh, through the body surface. Okay. And yeah, most of them can also be removed during um, egg digestion. and all. So this completes the abdomen of cockroach, digestive system of cockroach, as well as the excretory system.